Hello everybody and welcome to another edition of Poland Daily Travel, your favorite travel show about Central uh, Europe and particularly about Poland. I'm Will Richardson, your host, and here I'm standing in Pultusk. You might ask yourself, what is a Pultusk? Pultusk is the name of the town that we're in. And uh, behind me, you'll see, stretching as far as you can see, to that church and beyond is perhaps the largest or at least the longest town square in Europe. I don't know that it's larger than the one in Krakow in terms of its width and everything, but it's big. All they have to do is say uh, that it's certainly impressive. They've turned it into a big parking lot, which is fair enough, because in the old days, this would have been a thriving coaching uh, destination. And a, and a pastor on the way uh, to Warsaw, from positions east, from Grudno, from, from, from Vilnius, uh, from, from Minsk, from places like this. Over here, you'll see, this place has been, they call it one of the most invaded towns, if not the most invaded town in Poland. And I'll show you that right here, there's a plaque that Napoleon stayed in this particular house when he was, uh, uh, after the Battle of Pultusk, which he won on uh, the 29th of December in 1806. The 29th of December in 1806. He's just stayed here a night or two, uh, but that's the house. It's still here. And as you can see, probably hasn't been greatly renovated since that time. They've thrown some green paint on there, but that's about it. Now, what about else about Pultusk? Uh, it was founded sometime, or at least there was a settlement here. It's right on the Narev River. There was a settlement here from around the 10th century. So that's a thousand years that this place has been uh, uh, on the trade route, so to speak. The Narev River, which is a beautiful river that flows from the east uh, through many towns, uh, but uh, and villages to uh, Pultusk, and then uh, Pultusk is the, the, the largest uh, town. It's not a big town, 17,000 people, more or less. I, I didn't count them myself, but that's what I read. And uh, this goes uh, all the way to the Vistula River, which is about uh, 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 50 kilometers away, I would say. Uh, 70 kilometers to beautiful downtown Warsaw, and it's a fantastic uh, new skyline. Now, but here, this is a very popular place for uh, Warsaw people to come out uh, here on the weekend and get out of town, especially on a hot day like today. Look, uh, nice little harbor. And this is not a lake, but it's the Nerev River. The Nerev River is one of my favorites. Go this way. All you have to do is get yourself a little boat. If you're feeling very strong, a kayak, and keep going that direction to the east, and you'll end up in Belarus. If you go the other way, you're going to run into uh, the Wisła River, the Vistula, at Warsaw uh, near Modlin Airport. And it's going to merge. This river is going to merge at Serotsk, S. E-R-O-C-K, Serotsk, or Serok, if you wish, in English. The Bug River, which also comes from uh, Ukraine, equally beautiful, merges with this particular river into the Wisła at Modlin, where Warsaw's second airport is. So that's a bit of orientation for you. You see the people down here having fun on a hot day. It's already 90 degrees Fahrenheit, it's uh, headed for 33 or 34. So you have everything you want in Pultusk. You have access to Warsaw, airports, communication. But you have a nice small town full of uh, history and culture, a town that even Napoleon thought was worth fighting for, as did the Russians that he defeated, uh, which is also a nice uh, distant mirror, the Russians being defeated. At that time, the Poles didn't care who beat the Russians. 
as long as somebody beat them. And once he did, Poland had a duchy. It was no longer, longer under uh, Russian domination, became under uh, the governance of Napoleon and the French. And that was an important part of Polish history because it broke the partition for a while. Of course, Napoleon, a little too overexcited, decided to attack uh, Moscow and came to no good and saw his army uh, destroyed in the process. Look at all these, these cannons behind me. What would this be about? What is happening here? And the casement here to, to uh, pull the cannon along. This is old school stuff from the 19th century. And why is it here in Ostrowanka, just a stone's throw, or you have to have a very good arm, but uh, from the river, the Narev River. Why, why, why? Because this here building, right here behind me, this big white building with the cross on it, is a mausoleum to those who died in the 1831 November uprising in Ostrowanka. Ostrowanka has incredible history. It is, Ostrowanka has been at the forefront of so many different rebellions. The Kosciuszko Rebellion, the 1831 Rebellion, the later uh, 19th Century Rebellion, the First World War, Second World War. This city has been destroyed by everybody who's ever invaded Poland. They had a brief respite when Napoleon was here, and Napoleon made things nice for a couple of years and uh, until he decided to press on and uh, move on to further to the east. Now, why is this uh, uprising so important? Well, because it was against the Russians. The later uh, uh, uprising in the 19th century was also against the Russians, there were two. But this is the one in 1831. It wasn't even a close run thing. It wasn't even close because Eventually, the Russians were gonna overpower them. Does it sound familiar with the amount of men, with their amount of armaments, with just the vastness of the resources of Russia? Poland was invaded by the Russians several times, partitioned by the Russians from, from the, uh, uh, the late uh, 1700s, from the Kosciuszko uprising. You know Tadeusz Kosciuszko, Washington's right hand, the man who designed West Point. He was another great Polish hero who tried to uh, free Poland from, uh, from the partition by the Russians. Prussians, Prussians, the Germans, and the Austrians. And this went on and on for 200 years, just about 200 years. So, this represents, this represents, and they may have even been fighting near here, I don't know, for sure, but this represents uh, a memorial to that uprising in the place where the biggest battle took place. Every school child in Poland studies the 1831 uprising. In fact, where this mausoleum here is situated, is actually on the battlefield. In fact, this was part of the battlefield. This was a fortress where protected the Tsars, that's the Russian Tsars, um, powder, gunpowder. So obviously it was a, a prime target for the, for the Poles during that uprising. So this here was the fort, surrounded by a moat. We saw that as we were driving along. We didn't know exactly where this fortress was, but we saw the moat and said, ah, <laughs> One thing leads to another. This must be where it was. And in fact it is, and that's why they've put the mausoleum here. Okay, let's clear it up. And by the way, very nice uh, a lady came out and spoke to us and asked who we were and said, please have fun and, uh, and make a good program for the people who don't know this story. Um, and so we appreciate that. But here, you can see that this is a monument to 150 years of the battle. And it says solidarity on this monument. And it commemorates 1831 to 1981. 
which is interesting. This is just the beginning of solidarity uh, when this would have been organized, which means that you're under a communist government, but they let you remember a communist government, which is, of course, under a Russian or Soviet authority, and they still let you commemorate an ancient battle against the Russians, not ancient 150 years, but ancient history uh, to most of you.